On our modern networks, there may be a number of routers between one device and another machine on the other side of the network. And if we're communicating on the internet, we may have no idea what path a packet takes between point A and point B. The trace route command can give you an idea of just how many routers a particular packet goes through to get to that other side of the network. To run this in Windows, we use the trace RT command. If you're in a Unix or a Linux, a POSIX-based environment, you use the entire word trace route. These are the same programs. There's some minor features and functionalities that are a little bit different between them. But functionally, they are exactly the same trace route capability. Traceroute uses a feature of the Internet Control Message Protocol, or ICMP, called Time to Live Exceeded. As you recall, Time to Live is a value within the IP header that is set by the originating station. And every time that packet goes through a router, that router takes that Time to Live number and decreases it by one. This is so that if a packet happened to be looping around a network, maybe there was a network misconfiguration, that eventually routers would drop certain packets off when their time to live finally got down to zero. When that finally reaches the number zero, a router has received a time to live of one and realizes I can't send this any further, it sends a message back to the originating station called the time to live exceeded error message. And that way, the end station knows that that packet that was sent out was ultimately dropped by a router somewhere along the way. Well, Traceroute uses this. It sends out the first packet with time to live equal to one, and it waits to get the error message back. Then it sends another packet with time to live set to two, and now we're waiting for the second router to reply back with the time to live exceeded. Then we set it to three, and we find out where the third router is, and so on, until that packet gets finally all the way through to the ultimate IP address. One of the challenges you have with using Traceroute is not all networks are going to be able to provide you with an ICMP time to live exceeded message. Some firewalls and some routers will filter that information, and some won't reply or respond at all to an ICMP request of any kind. And in those particular situations, you may get a timeout as you go through that hop. And then once the packet gets all the way through to the next hop, you're able to get more information again. Just have to be patient and make sure that you're able to see traffic as it's going all the way through and wait for the entire trace route to complete. If you're finding that you're performing a trace route and it gets to a certain spot and it can't go further, then you can either understand that perhaps the network is down at that point, or it may be filtered ICMP from that point forward, and you may have limited amount of information that you'll be able to get from that traceroute command. Let's run a traceroute on my local network and see what we get. I'm on my Linux machine, so I'm going to type out the entire word traceroute. If you're on your Windows machine, it will be trace RT. And I'm going to trace route to my local machine, my local router, which is 10.1.10.1. Each hop, each time it performs a probe of a particular time to live, it does it three times. And you can change that in the parameters of your trace route. But one of the things you'll notice as it sends out the single trace route, there's only one hop to get to that particular router. And it shows you three separate round trip times that it got from communicating. It sent three separate probes, and it got three separate ICMP time exceeded messages. Well, that's, of course, local. There's only one hop. I know my router's right there. That's an easy one. Let's clear this screen and run another one. Let's run the trace route again. But this time, let's go out to the internet. Let's go to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google's DNS server. And I'm just going to use the default parameters. We'll send three probes every hop along the way. Name resolution is also turned on. So if it goes through a particular IP address that has a name associated with it in DNS, it will also put the name of that router on the screen. And that might help you understand more about geographically where that router is or who happens to own that particular piece of information, because you'll have a name and a domain name associated with it. Now, I'm on Comcast Network, so you can see one of the first couple of hops. We have Comcast.net routers. And then once it gets past that point, it's going further and further out to the internet. I'm getting other types of IP addresses that don't happen to have a name associated with it. I know it made it to Georgia. And we're just going to sit here and wait for the trace route to complete. Now, the idea is that once I know the path to get to Google at 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, one of the things that's going to help me later is if I can no longer reach that address, I'll have an idea previously of the path that it took. 
For instance, the trace route is now done. It went through 13 different hops to finally get to that DNS server at Google. So between me and that particular server, there are a lot of places where something can go wrong. Now, hopefully, Comcast and the other providers in between have redundancy built into their networks and additional paths that a packet might take if there's a problem. But here I can see the path that my particular query took, at least right now. If I perform this trace route later in the day, it may be a different set of routers that takes place, and I'd be able to view those in the trace route. So if you're having a problem communicating to a device and you're wondering, is it getting all the way through, or am I stopped somewhere along the way? Is there an outage? And where is that outage? You may be able to perform a trace route and see exactly where along the line the path of communication finally halted.